Meet John. For the past few days, his hands have been covered with red and discolored skin patches. John decides to go meet his family doctor. Doctor, can you take a look at my skin? I don't know what happened. It has been itchy all week. Hmm. It seems like you have atopic eczema. What's that? Eczema is a group of conditions that cause the skin to become itchy, inflamed, and red. The most common form is atopic eczema, also known as atopic dermatitis. Am I contagious? Is it serious? This condition is not contagious and is actually very common. The amount of people with atopic eczema in Canada alone is higher than the worldwide average. About 10 to 20 percent of the population has some form of atopic eczema. The severity varies from person to person, and if left untreated, it can worsen and be prone to other infections known as secondary infections. Let's take a closer look. Healthy skin has a tough outer layer called the epidermis to keep out harmful bacteria and viruses collectively known as pathogens from getting into our skin and causing illnesses. However, people with atopic eczema have a weaker epidermal layer, allowing pathogens to get in more readily and moisture to leave the skin more readily. This causes dry skin. Our immune system is responsible for protecting us against these pathogens. It does so by activating defenders, called cytokines, in the second layer of skin called the dermis. These defenders then release substances to fight the pathogens. These substances cause inflammation, or swelling, of the skin. Normally, this reaction goes away quickly, but in people with atopic eczema, it remains for longer periods of time, giving the red appearance on your skin. So what causes atopic eczema? One factor may be an oversensitive immune system, meaning contact with certain allergens or substances such as metals, soaps, fabrics like wool, etc., is detected by the immune system to be a pathogen. This causes the immune system to respond to it and produce eczema flares. The substances that can trigger this reaction vary from person to person. Another factor may be genetic. Some people who have atopic eczema may have a mutation or change in part of their DNA which disrupts the production of the protein called filigrin. Filigrin plays a role in forming the epidermis, so without filigrin, a strong protective layer is not formed. Therefore, it is easier for pathogens to get into the epidermis and for moisture to leave, as mentioned earlier. Studies conducted in recent years demonstrate that there is a correlation between having mutations in the filigrin gene and developing atopic eczema. People diagnosed with atopic eczema who also had the filigrin mutation had an earlier onset and more severe symptoms of the disease when compared to people who had atopic eczema but did not carry the mutation. Symptoms include inflammation or swelling of the skin, red or discolored skin patches, itchiness, which can range from mild to severe, dry, sensitive, rough skin, or crusting of the skin. Some individuals may have all of these symptoms, and some may only have a few. Before coming up with any conclusions, it is important that you consult with a medical professional first. Although eczema doesn't have a cure yet, there are several treatment options that the dermatologist may recommend for you. These can include over-the-counter medication which don't require a prescription to help relieve pain and inflammation. Prescription creams include steroids, calcineurin inhibitors, and PDE4 inhibitors. Steroids are naturally occurring substances made by our body to regulate the immune system and can be applied on the skin to reduce inflammation and itching. The strength of the steroid cream can range from mild to severe and are prescribed depending on the severity of eczema. TCIs stop certain cells of the immune system from reacting, thereby preventing inflammation. It is used for short, intermittent periods of time. Furthermore, the immune system releases proteins called cytokines which fight infections, causing inflammation. PDE4 inhibitors block the production of these cytokines, thereby preventing inflammation. Topical antibiotics can also be prescribed to treat secondary infections caused by pathogens. If the infection is much more severe, oral antibiotics may be preferred. If the condition is extremely severe and these methods don't prove to be effective, your dermatologist may prescribe more aggressive therapy, such as phototherapy, also known as light therapy, 
which is treatment that uses different wavelengths of ultraviolet or UV light to reduce itch and inflammation. It is normally used for eczema that is all over the body. Oral steroids help suppress the immune system to reduce inflammation. These are reserved to only be used for the most severe cases, as there are many long-term side effects that can occur with prolonged use. Another option is prescription biologic drugs, which use the human DNA or proteins to treat certain diseases at the immune system level. The immune system also produces proteins called interleukin to fight pathogens. Biologics work by blocking these proteins to prevent inflammation. Biologics are prescribed for severe cases, but also for moderate cases, if topical medications did not work first. Antibodies are proteins made by our bodies that bind to pathogens and destroy them. However, some people with atopic eczema have an increased amount of a specific type of antibody called IgE antibodies, which cause inflammation. Many types of biologic drugs target IgE antibodies to prevent them from working and causing this inflammation. Oh, I see. What treatment would you suggest for me? For you, prescription cream will do the job. However, if symptoms worsen, don't forget to consult me first. Thanks, doctor. I feel more relaxed now.